Hey, ATL, we're back in studio recording, and we're really excited. First of all, we want to wish each and every one of you a happy Women's History Month. It's March, and so this month we'll be highlighting woman issues. It's also Social Work Month, so we'll be talking about social issues that are affecting our communities and our families. But today we have a treat. I normally do the interviewing, but today I am going to be interviewed, and we have a guest with us, uh, Jerrica, who is going to be interviewing me about my work. So we're excited to have her in studio. Uh, this session is meant to really just highlight the work of the agency and just some of the vision that we have out here in Metro Atlanta, Cobb County, uh, Gwinnett County, and Fulton County. County. So really excited. Let's jump right into it. Hey, Jerrica. Wow. <laughs> Hi, Shaniqua. Thank you so much yes. for having me on. I'm excited to get into this yes. interview. I'm really excited too. <laughs> yes. You know, this is going to be so good because I know you. I've seen you behind yes. the scenes yes, as hardworking <laughs> as you are. You are, if you don't know, this is a hardworking woman. Yes, She look good right now, but she's hardworking. And so and we want to just ask you a few questions yes. like, what is a leader? Because you mm. have this leadership um, ability mm. and quality and just for some about yourself. Mm -hmm. What is a leader? I love that question. And so the first thing that comes to me is this, this really interesting picture of when I was two years old. Mm -hmm. um, and growing up in a family with six, um, five other siblings, six oh, of wow. us all together, each of us one year apart, um, and being raised in that environment, I essentially, I think my leadership is, is where it really started. Mm -hmm. So when I was two years old, one of the things I used to do was clean the house all the time. Mm -hmm. I was serving. And I really didn't know what it was, but it was just a part of me. It was a part of my my nature. So my mom describes it as, you know, you used to clean everything. She said you were two years old and you would scrub down the counters and a stove and you would sweep and you would mop and you'd wash all the dishes at two years old. And she said you would do it all the time. And so this was something that was innate, right? At two years old, who teaches you to go scrub down the house? Right. And so when I think about leadership, I, that image comes to me because I think a leader is someone that serves. Leadership you. is about servant. It's about meeting people where they are it's about really being connected to people it's about people I love and that. I think that's really the essence of leadership I love that and I like how you said you went to the cleaning portion <laughs> because a lot of people don't like to do that yes, portion it's true of serving cleaning like yes. get someone else to do that so I love right. that you took that that position right. and showed yourself as a good leader yes and so when we talk about leadership we're going to talk about community. Mm -hmm. What does that look like for you being a leader in your community? I know you're in Cobb County. Yes. So how does that look as you've been a leader in Cobb County? We know it's a lot of other <laughs> leaders out here. Yes. <laughs> so for Shaniqua, let's hear that. Yeah. Well, so I started, um, many people know that I'm originally from the Bronx, so that's my hometown. Okay. And so a lot of my, serve, my service and what I've been doing in the community started in the Bronx. And I think it really started... Um, um, I'd probably say elementary school. I started with just serving my local elementary school, volunteering for school plays, um, volunteering to do poetry. I was always the first to, to start something in elementary school. I got uniform initiative started in like fifth grade. I um, need trailblazing. <laughs> yes. So I think just all the, the things I, I was doing in school really spoke to what I would eventually be doing later on. And I want to say my first summer youth job at 14 years old, that really is what spun things for me. Mm -hmm. um, I had got a job as a summer youth worker to work in a foster care agency. And that is really where my love for like community and, and serving people, um, vulnerable populations, started. Because I noticed that there was so much going on in my community. My eyes were essentially open. Although I was living in it, I started to see things from a different viewpoint. Um, and so from that moment on, my entire life from 14 years old has been spent studying communities, serving in communities in multiple capacities in my local church. Um, I served as a pastor aide. I helped start multiple initiatives. I advocated to get the youth center inside of the wow. church opened at like 15. I was always doing something, oh, wow. starting something very, very young. So it's very innate. It's I think it's really my DNA. It's who I am. I think it's just the way I'm designed. Um, and so in the Bronx, I've done tons of work um, from starting a nonprofit organization, which is, you know, what we're, what the agency that's hosting this podcast. And I started that at the age of 25 years old. Um, at the time, my daughter was a newborn baby and um, I had got a vision to start 
this organization. And I really didn't know what it, what it meant. I didn't have any prior business skills. And so I was really confused about the vision that I was getting because yes. I was wondering, how could I do something like this? But as I began to sort of meditate and pray and, and really try to understand what it was, I began to write it out. And about nine months later, I took a leap of faith. I took mm-hmm. that vision and I went to like a, a neighboring community center and said, hey, this is a vision I have. Um, like, what, what, what could we do with this? And th- this guy named Errol Bedford took a chance on me and he said, why don't you start tomorrow? Wow. And I was like, start tomorrow. He's like, yeah, like implement this tomorrow. Tomorrow, tomorrow. Yes. And so that's where things really took off. From there, we we developed over, designed over 40 programs, um, started in a local uh, community center, but it, it's been expanded into multiple sites. Today, we have over 13 school sites that we're I serving out in it. New York City. Um, and so what I would love to see is some of those initiatives brought in Cobb County, We've worked in the largest school district in the world Mm -hmm. with over 1.3 million students. And we have seen our programs like mental health and education um, and recreational services work. And what we notice is that the issues in New York City are very similar to the issues out in Cobb County. Um, Not exactly the same, but when it comes to youth of color, they are dealing with issues of access. They're dealing with issues of lack of mental health resources, lack of high quality education. And so what I would love to see as a leader is how do we bring these types of programs into Cobb County to really undergird our school system? Yeah, and I, I am backtracking a little bit because I do like how you said that you found what you love even at a young age. Oh, yeah. And then going into that being thrown out at the age of 25 yeah. with a newborn Newborn baby. baby That's right. <laughs> with a newborn baby. And so with the programs that you all have and with the accounting, what how, how would you be able to merge that so that we can have a better community and so that more kids, even of color, yeah. will be able to have equality? I love that. And I think it's about equality, but also equity. I think Mm -hmm. there are two key words when it comes to youth of color. It's access and equity. Mm -hmm. And those are the two things that they struggle with, right? Because the playing field is not level for youth of color. When they start out, they're already starting out where they're essentially, they they have to play catch up their entire lives. Because when they start out, they are starting out in a world that that wasn't designed for them or in a country that was not designed for them. Mm -hmm. And so they're consistently trying to play catch up. And this is very structural and systemic. And so what I would love to see is this address more from a macro level. Um, about a few weeks ago, I was in a board meeting, a school board meeting, um, and we were talking about strategic planning and the strategic plan for Cobb County schools. And there was a lot of um, contention, and I understood why from the parents there. Looking at the strategic plan, we noticed that there were not any specific statistics there. Mm-hmm. So there was benchmarks without stats. And essentially, to me, that means that leaders don't want accountability. Mm-hmm. Because if you can say, well, this we want to make sure kids graduate. But how many kids? What's the percentage? Right. What's the pathway to get there? And if we can't have that laid out on paper and have a real plan for that, how are we setting our kids up for success? So I would love to see leaders taking it more seriously on a macro level. And I'm not saying no shots at the leadership of Cobb County Schools. I think they're right. all doing a great job. But I think there's room for improvement. It's definitely room for Absolutely. So I think starting with like strategic planning, how do we take that strategic plan and make it real and make it relevant to what kids actually need today, especially kids of color? A lot of the schools in Cobb, they're underserviced, they're lacking in STEM, um, they're lack- lacking in engineering and other essential um, industries that kids are not getting exposure to. These are the programs I would love to see I raise partner with Cobb County Schools to implement. I love that vision. I really do. And you have a heart for everyone, not just the children, not Mm -hmm. just those that are in school, the children, but the elderly. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've heard you talk about the elderly, how it is so dear to your heart. Absolutely. And so what do you see yourself as a leader doing for the elderly? How can you help elderly people? Yes. And I love that because our seniors, there's so many issues going on with yes. them. I think one of the trends that we are seeing is that a lot of our grandparents are actually raising their grandchildren. Yes. And that's presenting with so many issues. We had a board of director, a board officer, our prior president, um, Pamela Clark, who I loved very dearly. I called Mama Clark, passed away a few years ago during a pandemic. But 
she actually, her kids were a part of I Raise for many years, and she was raising her grandkids. They mm-hmm. were a part of I Raise. She was raising them, and she did the best that she could. She was, see, she was sick going through cancer and cancer treatments, but at the same time really struggling to try to provide for her grandkids, yeah. um, dealing with stress and so much things, and didn't have a lot of resources. I think that's the reality of many of our grandparents today. They're raising their grandchildren. Right. They're trying to make ends meet. They need help. They need support. So some of the things we've done is we've done uh, parenting education, parenting workshops, um, helping parents to connect to services, and that includes grandparents. Mm -hmm. So making sure that they are connected to the resources that they need, whether it's social services or whether it's some type of benefits, but connecting them to the right resources and really not just making a referral, but ensuring that they have that service so that their families are enhanced. The other thing I would love to see happen is a almost like a family hub. Mm-hmm. And we actually wrote a proposal for this in New York City. Yeah. Um, and it would serve seniors, families, and children. And through this family hub, we would connect all family members, especially seniors, to any access services. I love it. Seniors are, are dealing with access issues, right? Because of sometimes mobility right. um, or sometimes not able to access technology. Things are very convoluted for them. Yeah. So through this hub, they will be able to have a, a coach, a family coach, that would connect them to all the services that they need. Wow. And some of them would be in home. So that's the vision. I would love to see that happen for wow, our seniors. Wow, you're definitely feeling the gap. Yes. It's like a bridge. I love that. And so what are your plans or what would you like to see in the future in Cobb County? Wow, that's a good question. So I would love to see more partnerships. I think a lot of times where we fall short is we operate in silos, especially in government. We tend to feel like we could do it all ourselves, and the reality is we can't. Mm -hmm. It takes a collective. It takes a community. It takes partnership. Right. And I would love to see Cobb really partnering with community-based organizations like I Raise Girls and Boys that has the expertise, that has the prototype, that can come in and undergird teachers and principals Mm -hmm. and school staff and children and families. I would love to see more partnerships. I envision if with more partnerships that schools would be resourced and holistic and children would have access to the resources that they need. We'd have more after-school programming, more expanded learning opportunities. Seniors and families would be better supported. Teachers wouldn't be burnt out. Right. Principals would be innovative enough to develop initiatives that they want for academic excellence. I can see our kids graduating at high rates, going into the best schools, becoming industry leaders. That's the vision. That is amazing. The yeah. children are our future. Yes, absolutely. They are our future. And if we do not take the time out and think like this and spend that time to cultivate them and spend that time with them, we will lose our children. And I thank you and commend you so much and I raise Mm -hmm. for your service to the community because a lot of people do not like to do community work and that takes work it takes yeah. after hours oh yeah yeah definitely our team we 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 have a heart for this and what i love about iras is so special is that Everyone that's there, we're, our heart is fully in it. We are committed to it, whether it's because of lived experience, whether we feel like it's a higher calling or a purpose. But yeah. everyone, we're, our heart is in it, right? We we love the work that we do. We love our kids. We love our communities. We want to see them thrive. We want to see them succeed. And so we work around the clock. You see me working all the time. All the time. We don't sleep. So we like work. Put- <laughs> Relax. <laughs> All the time we're working because yeah. we are committed. We're committed to making sure we're fighting for our kids right. because our kids are up against so much, you know. And so we believe that we have to stand in a gap for our kids, yes. and that's what we're doing. I so love that, <laughs> and I can say that so much. I love that. I love that. I love that. And why wouldn't why wouldn't anyone school systems and different resources want to partner with our race especially with the heart posture a lot of people are about money nowadays right but you definitely have to have a heart for this for longevity oh yeah oh yeah we're actually 10 years so we're celebrating our 10th year this year congratulations really excited thank you we we uh we're really excited about the work of the organization and about our future and where we're going we definitely want to be able to serve the entire nation 
Um, it's going to take some time, so it's a part of our strategic plan. Mm -hmm. But we're committed to serving children all over. So how can they partner with you? Yeah, so great question. So if they're a school, if you're a school and you're watching, um, we actually, on our website, there is a section for schools. Okay. And there is a form that principals or school districts can fill out. And on that form, you can actually indicate the type of services that you would like us to provide. Our services are customizable. We recognize that every school district and every school is, is very unique. Um, and so our services may range from mental health. We have a team of therapists that will come into the school and provide services to the students year long. Uh, we also have social emotional learning workshops for students. We teach trainings to teachers. Um, we also do mental health aid workshops. Wow. Uh, we have a Generation Z program that brings instructors into high schools and middle schools and provides college and career access programs and um, credit hours to students that are interested in going into law, entrepreneurship, medicine, Ooh. accounting, sports management, journalism, and social work. We have tons of resources Ooh, wow. and programs, and we're there for our, our schools. We understand the problems that you're facing. We understand your pain. We've been with you throughout the COVID-19 pandemic um, right by your side, and we get it. That's why we're there to really undergird our school. So if there is a school interested yeah. in, in partnering, reach out to us. We're one call, one email away. And if it's a community-based organization, we partner with tons of organizations um, through Throughout the East Coast, and so we'd love to partner with you. Reach out to us. Uh, we're very approachable. We're backed up in meetings right now. A lot of people are reaching out. Um, they just did a That's CBS a segment on us in New York City that garnered a lot of attention, lifting up our mental health initiative. But we're here. We want to partner with you. We love our community. So reach out to us. Um, um, I'm sure the staff will probably be putting across the screen the email address, but it's info at iraceinc.org. I love it. One stop shop. <laughs> yes. I raise is a one absolutely. stop shop. Yes. You literally have everything yes. that a person needs. And yes. I love that Shaniqua Moore doing it. The <laughs> leader. Yes, ma'am. Leader of our generation. Yes, ma'am. I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> and you're doing a very, very, very good job. I appreciate it. And you. I thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for being an inspiration to me oh, as you. well. Thank you. As well. I see so much behind the scenes. And yes. I wish everyone can see the great work that you're doing for our community and keep up the good work. Thank you so much, Dorothy. No I appreciate problem. you. Thank you. And thank you all for watching our special edition today. I would like to thank you, Jerrica, for being with us and sharing the space you. with me, um, recognizing our work. Uh, this, uh, again, this interview was meant to really uplift the initiatives of uh, iRaise in Metro Atlanta. So we hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for our next episode. Thank you. Thank you.